and just one floor below that hearing in the Dirksen Senate Office Building, the Energy Committee today spent the morning discussing one specific aspect of energy policy. The natural gas industry says the generation source is clean and it is abundant, but natural gas is not encouraged as a clean energy source with impending energy legislation. Clean Skies Dee Bombani was in that hearing earlier today. And Dee, what exactly is the gas industry looking for here in terms of what you heard in testimony today? Well, executives of the natural gas industry told the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee that natural gas is plentiful and clean and the Congress should do more to boost it, uh, more so than the House did when it passed its energy bill in June. The Energy Information Administration says the natural gas outlook is favorable in the near term. EIA Administrator Richard Newell told lawmakers that natural gas prices are on track to slowly rise in the coming two decades, running in a range of $6 to $8 per thousand cubic feet. Newell said proven reserves, including those from shale, are strong and reflect a positive outlook over the long term. By 2030, however, with policies encouraging renewables such as the production tax credit and direct grants and loans, clean energy technologies will be more competitive with natural gas, as will nuclear power and even coal, with the development of carbon capture and sequestration. Now that long-term outlook worries the chairman and president of BP America, Lamar McKay. McKay said BP supports an all of the above approach to climate policy. It should encourage development of all clean sources of power, including domestic natural gas. He said too often the gas industry is demonized in legislation when in fact it's just what the country needs to move to a low carbon economy. He pointed to allowance allocations in the House and Senate bills that insulate the utility sector while exposing the refining sector quickly to carbon costs. He said that puts pressure on an industry already facing significant challenges in this green revolution. Now we support a national climate policy that creates a level playing field for all forms of energy that produce carbon emissions. In pending legislation, the playing field is not level. In spite of its economic and environmental benefits, gas is being squeezed out of the power sector by mandates for increased use of alternatives and protection of high carbon coal generation. We have long supported transitional incentives for alternatives. If we can't achieve a level playing field within the power sector, then we would support transitional incentives to kickstart the phased retirement of the nation's least efficient and most carbon intense coal-fired plants. Now, almost every other witness agreed with McKay. Executives from Excel, Calpine, and TransCanada Pipeline said the Senate needs to pass a bill that includes natural gas under the clean energy rubric. But one witness dissented. The director of energy risk at Dow Chemical said putting a price on carbon could be enough for a boost for natural gas. And coupled with rising natural gas prices, it could really be all the natural gas industry needs, Tyler. Uh, Dee, having spent enough time around the Energy Committee, it has a great reputation for bipartisanship. So mm -hmm. I'm curious about what the respective leaders of the parties on the committee had to say, Chairman Jeff Bingaman and also Ranking Member Lisa Murkowski, in terms of their reaction and their questions for the witnesses today. Well, uh, Chairman Jeff Bingaman of New Mexico said, you know, first he asked, do we really have a hundred years worth of natural gas in the United States? That was his big question. Then he explored the idea of a carbon tax. That was, of course, amenable to the energy companies. But one thing he found interesting is that the companies are also amenable to more government regulation. That is, a bill that would require companies to retire some of their dirty coal plants and or, and or convert them to either shut them off completely or convert them to a natural gas fired uh, type of plant. Uh, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, the ranking Republican, said whatever happens in this bill, make sure that natural gas is part of that clean energy uh, mix because you can't separate the two, natural gas from renewable energy and other clean energy sources. So even though this committee passed legislation a few months ago, the work is far from done for now. Right, That's clear. Exactly. All right, Dee Bambani, thank, thank you very much.